Tubby Smith has had a long and distinguished career as a college basketball coach. He's uh, affected a number of lives positively throughout his career, and most of all, he is an outstanding, outstanding human being. However, I feel it's time for a fresh approach for our basketball program, for our student athletes, and the program in general. We felt now, following a season where there were high expectations for this coaching staff, that it was time to make a change for the benefit of our student athletes and as we build for the future. We made this decision uh, based on an evaluation of the overall body of work. And once we did, we've decided to move swiftly in order to find uh, the best coach and the best fit for our, our uh, student athletes and the program in general. The athletic department will lead the search uh, along with the president's office. We will not hire a search firm. Um, I feel that uh, myself and our senior staff with our network will be able to find a terrific coach uh, for the future. Our goal is to secure the best candidate to build a Big Ten and NCAA men's basketball program that is a consistent winner and has a continued long tenure of success. We expect the new coach to manage and build the program. Um, expect him to recruit high quality student athletes and develop them on and off the floor. Um, we're looking for the right fit for this program, not only for the program, but for this great university and the role itself. Um, we'll be talking to a variety of candidates, uh, both locally and nationally. Uh, I don't want to reveal their names now, just uh, to keep the integrity of the search going. It's my expectation that we have a successful and winning men's basketball program here at the University of Minnesota. Questions? In, his contract, in, in Tubby's contract, it says that you have to notify him 90 days before his termination. Did you inform him a while ago before the tournament even started? No. Um, those are contract logistics. If, if you want to, um, you, you can ask those questions later, but it's just contract logistics that, that are in there. And I did not. And I don't, you don't have to do that uh, during the season. You say ongoing and revealing names. Have you already had conversations with potential? No, kids? I have not. Um, I have not any conversations. I mean, I talk to coaches a lot, but not a, not really about this. Do you have an idea now of, I know you're not going to name names, mm -hmm. but is there a short list in your head right now of guys you're going to go after? You always have a short list. You always have people that you have in mind. Um, and, you know, some are, are um, realistic, some are unrealistic. But I, I have a, a list in mind. But, you know, we'll, we'll work that and, and uh, we'll, we'll get a terrific coach. Charlie, when did you make the decision? Uh, Charlie, you know, it's, as I said, it's, it's an evaluation of the overall body of work. Um, and I evaluate throughout the year. Um, but, uh, you know, when it came down to the very end, I, I uh, consulted with Dr. Kaler and felt like it was time to, time to move on. Is that the date? No. For a fresh set of eyes uh, and fresh coach, did, did you feel like this program had just kind of reached the point where it wasn't growing and wasn't moving forward? You know, Chip, it's, 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 um, it's, it's really a future decision. Um, I mean, I, 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 didn't, I didn't evaluate the NCAA tournament only. I didn't evaluate really this, this year only. It's more of a matter of evaluating where we are and where we're going and I want to build for the future and know that, that you know, that's, that's a huge part of what went into play here. Got an 80-year-old Williams Arena that the fans love, like I wrote this morning. I talk to recruits coming here, they think it's a dump. You don't have a basketball building, which every other school in the Big Ten just, just about has. You have a, uh, a budget which isn't as high as a lot of schools. And you got, Tommy Smith has recruited these kids now for three, four years. A new coach comes in, he's got to start all over. Why couldn't you wait till next year? Let me say it again. I, I, uh make the decision based on, um, you know, uh, as I said, a whole body of work and evaluate where we are now. Um, I feel like it's by far the best decision that we can make right now. Um, there's a lot of, you know, you say there's limitations. Sure, we have some limitations, but we got a lot of great things too with this program. I mean, we have uh, a great state to sell. we got an unbelievably passionate fan base, and we got an unbelievable university. Um, and that's a, that's, that's a lot to sell right there. Nora, there's a lot of cost. a theme for the university where you are – actually buying out contracts for coaches, I mean, this has got to be getting expensive with school. You know, anytime you spend money for buyouts, it bothers me as well, just like it would bother citizens of Minnesota. But I hope that our fans will look at this as an, this one as an investment rather than an expenditure. And I'll take that lightly. It's a good question, and, and I, I think we, we have to consider that when we, when we make these decisions. How 
do you pay for this one? Do you expect some private donors that there will be money? Well, we'll this will be out of athletic department funds. I mean, we're always, we're, we have budget meetings every week, figure out how we can do things. And uh, it's my job to figure that out. So it'll be out, out of athletic department funds. You know, going forward, we're always going to raise money. Um, I don't really like to raise money for something like this, but this will be out of athletic department funds. Well, sir, can you commit that when you're negotiating contracts in the future, can you promise the state or taxpayers that there won't be large payouts in the future should we have to relieve a coach? I mean, we'll, we will uh, negotiate a contract that will be uh, smart and thorough. Um, but at the same time, when you hire a coach and you want to hire a very good coach, you have to put buyouts in there. Otherwise, you've got a major hand behind your back. But I'll be smart about that, and we'll work hard in that area. Or was, was Tubby truly surprised about the decision? He's been, he knows um, the yeah. I'll tell you what, he was very gracious. And um, I could see the disappointment in his eyes, and that's hard to, hard to tell Tubby. Um, he's a great human being. And um, I don't think he was totally surprised, but uh, he was very gracious, and that did not surprise me because of the way that he conducts himself and the person that he is. Uh, this afternoon, early this afternoon, that he had not been told yet, Norwood? Right. Yes. Yes. Norwood, who will, who will give direction in the days ahead in the basketball department? Um, myself and the senior staff will give good leadership, and, and we will uh, be in touch with the players quite a bit. Um, you know, they're, they're letting it all sink in right now, but we will be um, communicate with them heavily moving forward. Timetable for how fast do you want to hire a new coach? Um, you know, Michael, I, you, you want to move quickly and you want to you want to hustle, but you don't want to be too much in a hurry. So, um, you know, we'll we'll we will move swiftly. I don't want to put a time frame on it, but um, I want to get there as soon as we can. Did you call a meeting with the players? I did. I talked to them um, about thirty minutes ago. Nor, how much of this did it, did it have to do with? How much of this did it have to do with um, looking at the recruits that are in this state and ready to make a pretty big decision? And I mean, does that? Factor into uh, making a decision on this. You know, I, I it, all of it factors in. Um, again, I I go back to what I said earlier. You look at a at a larger body of work. You look at a lot of factors, and you, you try to come up with the best decision possible. There was no one factor that was more important than any others, though. Who was in the back? I missed somebody. I was curious. You kind of alluded to the conversation with Tubby mm -hmm. today. Was that in person? And in oh yeah, it was. Just in the last couple hours. It was. It was. Um, those are never easy, and, and it's harder when you got a great great guy like Tubby and makes it difficult. Was it a balance? You don't like buyouts? This is a staggering amount of money for most people. What do you say to a parent who's struggling to make tuition when you hear that kind of number associated with buying out a contract? Well, again, I don't take it lightly either. Um, you get down to where you have to decide, make a decision. And, um, again, I, you know, you, you – you put everything down on paper and you try to figure out where you want to go with things. And, and I, I just felt like this was the time to, to, to have a fresh approach. I do think that I will say again um, that I hope we'll see this as an investment rather than a, rather than a, a needless expenditure because um, this program needs to be good and it has the potential to be good, if not great. Was, the total was it a balancing act? Uh, had, had fundraising with Tubby as coach? I, I'm told it had almost dried up. It had really decreased. When you talk, it's hard. It's hard to determine that whether you say he's not giving because of someone or he's not giving because of someone. We've had some decent fundraising going on. Um, you know, we're putting together a facility plan where we'll need a lot of fundraising um, here in the future. So, um, but I, I can't really point to anything that says it was fundraising was drying up because of the basketball program right now. What's the total number for the buyout? It's two point five this year. Included anything like that? Well, right. there's some payouts that, that, that were part of his contract anyway. I don't want to call them payouts, but just um, that bonuses, you know, for postseason play of that nature, like that, that are involved in it. But the, that's separate from the buyout. Uh, Make sense? Okay. Do you what, what makes you think you can recruit a top guy? They haven't been able to recruit a number one guy for years. Jerry Kill was number five on the list. Four football coaches turned them down. I don't know what number you were, but I'll tell you what, this school has not been able to get, attract top guys. You think that you're gonna get the guy that UCLA wants or that some other top school wants? Unless you get your guy from VCU. Well, Sid, 
you know, we're going to look for the right fit for the program. It doesn't have to be the, the, uh, the candidate that everybody thinks we should get. It's going to be the right fit for our student athletes. And um, if we live in the past, we're going to get drugged down by the past. We've got to look forward, and we've got to work hard while looking forward and be encouraged by that. Few buyouts have been uh, alone from central administration. Likely that that will be the case again, or I'm not sure. We're we're working out the finances right now. We know we're going to be in good shape. Um, if I, I really do feel good about that, I mean we we've done some work in that area, and if, if we did not feel good about that from our own budget, we would not have, you know, been haphazard about a decision like this. You know, and look again, I don't take that uh, flippantly. A, a buyout number, it's tough. But we're looking at it as, as an investment for the future and, and something we feel like will, will, will propel us. What's the perception, the perception of getting rid of a coach off an NCAA tournament victory? No, I mean, again, I, I, we didn't evaluate this on just, you know, the NCAA tournament, whether we won or lost, and didn't evaluate it really solely on this year. Um, you know, it's my job to be um, – to make decisions about the vision of the program and the, where we're going as far as our trajectory. And it was really a matter of the overall kind of where we were and where we want to go. Would things have changed if he would have made this week 16? Or? I, I don't want to speculate on that. I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Michael? Uh, okay. with, with you guys, are you looking strictly at, at uh, existing head coaches? Um, you know, Chip, I don't want to limit us to what we're going to look for. Um, I want somebody here who um, – as I said earlier, is going to recruit at the highest level, develop kids on and off the floor, and manage and build the program. And, you know, it may not be, you know, you look at names and you think, well, he should go for that person, he should go for this person. It's more about fit and, um, and, and for what I feel like that person brings to the table and how it fits to where we are now. You say you're evaluating more than just wins and losses. Right. So what are some of the things, where were the shortcomings? Again, I don't want to get in, in, into the details. You guys have, and rehash that. I mean, I think it's just an overall summary of where we are now. There's not using a search committee. Are there ways that limits who you can? No, no. Um, you know, let, schools don't use search committee or search firms, and they do use search firms. There's a lot of great ones out there, um, but in this case, we felt it was better that we do not and don't feel like it's limiting in any way. Or it was clear that uh, word of Tubby's firing was out there before. We found out about it. How does that happen? Everything leaks all the time. We know that. You don't – no one intentionally did that. Things leak. And that's just the way it is. Or if you talk about recruiting at the highest level, I get this, at the same time, you want to run the clean program, you want the right guy in here. There are a lot of teams that go for the one-and-done type players. How, how fine a line do you have to walk when you look at what Tubby Smith's body of work has been and you look at the sort of things he's accomplished within that criteria you just mm -hmm. outlined? And now you're going a different direction, looking for someone who can do differently some of the things, same things? You know, I, again, I, I refuse to, to feel that we cannot grow as a program and not be great as a program. And I feel like if, if we bring someone in who has, some, uh, has a fresh approach and fresh ideas, that we could surprise ourselves. Um, I know there's things that you have to operate within, and we're always going to do that. Um, but I do feel like that we can go out and get a terrific candidate and feel good about it and move forward and, and – uh, Really, really move the program, um, move the program forward. Did you talk to players on this year's team? No, no, I would never do that. Were you worried about possible transfers? Well, I mean, I've been through a lot of transitions like this, and you, you know, there's always, you know, kids have to let things sink in. They're going to be emotional early on, and we're going to be in constant communication with them, um, and 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 talking to them, and and uh, making them feel good about and assure them about the future. There's no practice facility built yet. Hamper, you think in this search because Tubby was yeah. waiting for it for six years. And yeah, it, you know it's it's um it's out there and it is what it is. But I mean certainly, um we our, it's our intention to build one, and, and I want the new coach to know that. And it and uh, while we don't want to put a, a concrete time frame on it, I want them to know that we're going to move in that direction as quickly as we can. You're not keeping any assistants on as an interim guy. No, the whole the whole staff has been relieved, and um, myself and the senior staff will will um, be heavily involved with the kids moving forward. Or is it fair to say that you and Mike Ellis both feel that, especially a basketball search, is right in your comfort zone, your strength as you know, just given your well, best history? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's our job or my job to conduct a search and I feel good about that um, and again I, th I feel like we got a lot to sell as I said earlier um, I think sometimes we forget about the amazing positives here 
only Division I school in the state, in the Big Ten, um, you know, passionate following, amazing old, I mean, not old, uh, historic arena. And um, we've got a lot of great things to sell, and these other jobs, you know, they have their things, but we have, we have Minnesota to sell, and that's a great thing. Would you like to offer the next coach a salary that's uh, comparable to the top half of the Big Ten? You know, it's, it, it'll, it'll all be negotiable. You want to, again, you want to be smart with your funds and try to be a, a good steward of those resources. So it, it, it's negotiable, you know, depending upon kind of where you are at that time and, um, you know, what the background is of that coach and maybe what they've um, earned in the past. So you're not necessarily looking for a coach that less than they less than Tubby. No, no, no. It's kind of pretty wide open. How much are you aware already that I think this is true? There's not a black Big Ten basketball coach or football coach at right. this point. Does that enter into your thinking? Oh, it always does. I mean, we want to hire more uh, minorities, both uh, on the coaching side and the administrative side. I think about it all the time and want to do our best to um, do a better job there. We've, we've hired some, you know, we hired Quincy Lewis recently and, and uh, want to do a good job there in the future in a, in a number of different areas. I think about it all the time. It's very important. We take two more. You said 2.5 was the number this year. Is that the total? Yes. How do you think this is going to affect your recruiting? They've recruited these kids now for two years. You got the best crop in the state of Minnesota. I know Ron Jera had a fantastic relationship with uh, Jones. And one of the members of the family told me if Minnesota had a chance to get him, it would be because of that. Now your new guy comes in. You might not get a guy, and you got to start all over with these guys. And the Mike Kishevskis and the Tom Izos and all those people have recruited these guys all this time, and now you're going to bring in a fresh guy to compete with those guys. Well, I hope, uh, it's my intention to bring somebody in that you know will, will compete with everybody in the country um, and on a national level to recruit. Um, I want somebody who does that and, and I, as I said, develops them on and off the floor, someone who – uh, manages the program at the highest level, and that's that's our intention going forward. Uh, I know it's just men's men's basketball in Norway, but Pam Borden's status? I'm gonna just talk about men's basketball now. I don't don't want to go into any other areas. That's not not fair to the other sports. Any? Thank you very much. Appreciate it.